let me tell you my good. Mm. Even though we had injuries and it was killing us and it was devastating, the silver lining is we saw the opportunity for Dante Pettis, yeah. Mike Ladichi, yep. Richie James, yeah. Alfred Morris, Kendrick Bourne, just to name a few, to take the ball and run with. One of my favorites. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I was really excited to see how these young men performed out there. Are you listening? Damn. Damn. Ron Bo Sports here, representing the Niner Empire Organization worldwide, where 49ers football, it never ends! Fam, how you doing? Appreciate you, let me come in here and talk football, fam. You know, cause uh, after that season, I was just hoping everybody still be in a good mood. I know I am, but well, I think we got so much to look forward to. Hey, you check out that national championship game? Did you start your rookie shopping list already? Did you see people that you think will help the 49ers get to that next level? There were some guys that were seriously uh, to be considered in that game because we came into that game knowing that Cleveland Farrell, an edge rusher, we need an edge rusher, we need an edge rusher, and we need, uh, you, know, you think I'm talking about one at a time, I'm talking about if I get four or five, I would. Oh, you know how I feel about the pass rush. I have been crying and crying about the pass rush since, whoa, 24, 2014. You had Quentin Williams, Cleveland Farrell. I'm, I'm not talking about Quentin being an, an edge rusher, but I'm talking about some of the guys to be considered. Quentin Williams is in the mix because he is the best at what he does, supposedly. You also had Cleveland Farrell. Cleveland Farrell's in the mix, you know? Now, between those two players, Quentin Williams did not put on a display on this particular game. In fact, he was kind of handled, <laughs> to be honest. I, uh, you know, you need to, I guess we need to judge Quentin on his full body of work. I mean, one cold day does not a winter make. I know, I usually one hot summer does not, one hot day does not a summer make. You gotta go the same way with winter. One cold day does not a winter make. Although, in the past, usually on this particular stage, players usually put on their best stuff. I don't know, Cleveland Farrell, he was okay, but I don't know if, Cleveland had a couple of good plays though. Whereas, whereas uh, Quentin really didn't. And Cleveland, man, and Cleveland's been around the stadium talking to Stan Levi Stadium. It's a great atmosphere. The game was beautiful. What you talking about, Cleveland? <laughs> I'm, it was Cleveland saying all the right things on purpose. Does he know what he's doing? It's John Lynch, Adam Peters, and Matt, and Matt Mayhew. Are they looking and saying things like, yeah, that might be our guy. We had guys saying that last year about the 49ers, though. So it, it, it won't register in the, uh, Harold Landry said that last year. We didn't pick him up. So, you know, uh, I am uh, not gonna, as I say, not gonna place huge judgment on this. Uh, because I just don't, I don't know about, oh, I don't know how to calculate what I saw and translate it to will he be a good pro and will he be a good 49er pro, right? Meanwhile, over in Kentucky, <laughs> Josh Allen has just received the Lot Impact Award. <laughs> so there's everybody there all ready to roll. They call out Ronnie Lott, the legend is actually in Kentucky to give out the award. Body comes down and shakes hands with Josh Allen. Boy, I like your stuff, boy. Your epic season was made more than anybody would have probably believed that you was just doing everything right. And, and, and what does Josh do? You know, I, they told me about you, but I didn't, I don't know. I had to Google you up. Can you imagine Ronnie Lott? Ronnie Lott doesn't have a huge ego, right? But I'm, I, I'm Ronnie Lott, I'm all pro, 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 pro. You can't multiply the pro, pro, pros, man. And this dude, I mean, I understand he's only in his 20s, maybe early 20, right? In 21, 22. He knows nothing about Lott. It's okay. Lot still appreciates him and says he's going to be a great pro. And he looks forward to him uh, playing football in the NFL in the future. 
That's okay. Kind of worries me about Josh Allen. I know it's petty, but you know, if he has no regulation, normally if you're a hard hitting player, you know about the history of what you do. If I ask him who is Dick Butkus, is he gonna know? If he says no, I say, is it, do you, how far back can we go? Uh, anyway, I, I just would really like for him to have a, a more of appreciation of the people that came before him. He should have learned some things from people that came before him too. You know what I mean? So I'm a little concerned, but I do like him as a player. And if we picked him up, I ain't gonna be mad about it. It's gonna be one, hey fam, it's liable to be one of these three guys anyway. Quinnen, because the fact is, I'm not sure, and I think we've talked about this, it is word it seems to be out by some people who believe that Quinnen may end up replacing Solomon T. If Solomon T comes into camp and he's just not ready to roll yet, he would compete with Quinnen. One of them would end up being on the depth chart. But Quinnen Williams is said to bring something in the same family with Aaron Donald. If he has that kind of potential, Solomon T could be in trouble. You put guys like that next to DeForest Buckner, who's now rounding in the stride, becoming an absolute menace. They got to think about that for a minute, all right? And I know we don't want an interior guy. We got plenty of them. We got Contavia Street in the fold. Contavious is going to come out. We don't know what he's going to offer, but we figure it's going to be violence, violence, violence. Bam, you know what? That's a lot of violence, So If I got... Let's say we go ahead and get Quinnen. <laughs> I've got Defoe on one side. I've got Quinnen next to him. On my big end, I got Contavious Street. I mean, sealing that edge and everything else. I really, and Eric Armstead is in the mix, but that's gonna come down to math and that's gonna come down to figures. The 49ers have already said they'd like to keep him, but that doesn't mean they're going to keep him. They have until March the 11th to make a decision on whether or not they're going to pick that up or else they're going to owe him everything they said they would pay him. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. You put that kind of violence in the middle. Now Cassius Marsh, uh, Cassius Marsh is going to be out there probably, but you know what? Now you can put people like Ronnie Blair out there. And I do love me some Ronnie Blair. I want to put Ronnie Blair uh, either at the Sam or the Leo anyway. If you get all that power up the middle. Because people are going to be so busy trying to stop that rush. Ooh, I can see the strategy behind that, but I still want a pure edge rusher. Okay. And by the way, if you're a Nick Bosa fan, that ain't out. Oh, that is not out. You, you, you know what happened, don't you? Dwayne Haskins out of Ohio State, the quarterback. Dwayne, as of Monday, officially declared for the draft. How's that going to impact us? Now there's the Cardinals. They got the number one pick. At least four or five teams are going to be calling up the Cardinals, say, hey, you guys got that first pick. We want to know what would it take to get that pick away from you. So the Cardinals are going to be sitting there thinking, <laughs> we probably were thinking about taking Nikki Bosa, but... Uh, well, I, you know, every man has his price. What would you be offering? Now, if the cards do say no thank you, because I'm telling you right now, the cards got a rush that's not anemic. It is really brutal. They don't really need Nick Bosa. Chandler, Chandler Jones and the rest of his guys, they already put up all kinds of pain for everything. Ask C.J. Beathard about that pass rush. That's why we lost to those guys. They kept CJ laying down, running and hiding the whole game, making mistakes. CJ, I'm not, I'm just saying, CJ, I ain't mad at you, man. I'm just saying that Cardinals got a devastating pass rush. They don't need Nick Bosa to get better. Now, the cards take, take that deal, whomever, whether it be Oakland, New York, Jaguars, whoever. Now it's John Lynch is on the seat. And you know how John is? John will trade that. You know he'll trade Nick Bosa away. Or anybody else, because they're going to want a quarterback. So the first two picks are probably going to be quarterbacks. Maybe again this year, because a lot of quarter quarterbacks starving teams, right? Can you see John Lynch? Because he loves a deal, like I say. John Lynch picks up the phone. He's just sitting there holding it. Come on, call me. Call me. You know you're going to call me. Call me. Hey! No, no, I, 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 I was expecting another call. Actually, my uh, wife was... Uh, no, no, it's okay. I'm not busy. It's fine. Uh, what's up? Yeah, no, I... 
Well, yeah, we just picked up that pick. I, I didn't know the Cardinals were going to do that myself. But, uh, well, I, I might be interested. I mean, what are you going to offer? And <laughs> there, there's John, right? John, you know, I guarantee he's going to do it. He's going to feel those offers. Because the more picks of 49ers get at this point in the rebuild, I figure the better. So we probably have to swallow that. Nick Bosa, and there's a lot of pass rushers out there this particular year. So Nick Bosa may not be a must. Nick Bosa may not even be the best pass rusher out there. It could very well be Josh Allen. It could be a number of other people. Uh, it's, I don't know, fam. So, but don't give up. Nick Bosa may be still in the mix. So you got four guys that are potentially going to come to the San Francisco 49ers, depending upon what the Cardinals do. By the way, a second gold jacket wearing <laughs> Legend has endorsed Antonio Brown. Uh oh. Here comes Michael Irvin right on 95.7 to game. The 49ers just trade that second round pick. Or that, I'm sorry. The 49ers just trade that number two pick and get Antonio Brown. And then he went to defend Antonio Brown for all the antics we're hearing about in the media. He just went in defending Antonio. He sort of blamed everything on Nick uh, uh, Roethlisberger. And made it seem like Antonio Brown's almost a choir boy. Says Antonio Brown is not a troublemaker. He's never been a troublemaker. He would fit right in with the 49ers. And in fact, he goes on to say, if you got a guy like George Kittle, a good tight end, and a good wide receiver, there's nothing the defense can do to stop the 49ers offense. Okay. Oh, Michael, I don't know about the number two overall pick for a 31 year. He will be 30. I know he's 30 right now. A 31 year old Antonio Brown. I like what he brings to the table. He's awesome, but I don't want to give up no youngsters. And a lot of people do. How many years do you figure what to get from him of peak performance? Maybe three, if we're lucky. I don't like that. Giving up too much. I uh and he's gonna he's gonna call for a 22 million dollar salary hit. Not the first year, but I I'm uncomfortable giving up too much. If I gotta swap a player or two or something like that and a fourth round pick, or maybe I can bend for that. But otherwise, I can't be giving up no children for Antonio Brown, man. I don't know what they're gonna do. It's, you know what? It may not even be on the 49ers' mind. They may be thinking another direction. And again, then again, the 49ers have always said, we'll do anything we can to get better. He may be on the plate front of the, of the menu. There's no way to know. Just say, we'll find out later because the 49ers keep their cards close to the chest. And you don't know what they're going to do until suddenly, boom! Because we've had a couple of boom moments already. So Jimmy G, Richard Sherman, who I was against also before he got here. You heard me, I was talking all kind of smacks. I mean, don't bring that dude over here. Now nah, I love Richard Sherman like a brother. <laughs> and that's the way it works. If we get Antonio Brown, I'm sure I'm gonna fall in love with him the same way. So we'll see what happens. Cause you know, the idea of Antonio Brown and all pro George Kittle out there at the same time, it is intriguing. All right, we will see. Now I want one more thing too, fam. Dante Whitner, or as we affectionately call him, Hitler, wants to be a DB coach. Matt Barrows was going over some of the candidates to replace the exit of Jeff Halfley. And he named all kinds of names, all kinds of people. Anybody you think of that's great, that's not busy right now. Barrows put his name down. And apparently, Dante caught it on Twitter. And Dante puts it there, hey, I'm on me. Donnie goes on and on. I, can he handle it? Donnie's, I can't handle it. Absolutely. Dante is animate about it. Hitler could be it. Now, if you're Hitler, you come to San Francisco. I mean, Santa Clara, things would change immediately. The question is, do you want Hitler? I can see him now stay in the locker room. Finally, the Hitler has come back to San Francisco. <laughs> it ain't bad. I am saying. What's good, Rich? I'm just, you know. It comes off season. Yeah. Everybody know what this team needs. Mmm. Hey, what, Rumble? What? 
The main thing the 49ers need is luck, luck, and more good luck. Oh, so true. And I ain't talking about Andrew. <laughs> now, healthy Niners is a dangerous Niners. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to Vegas mm. and put my annual $10 on the Niners to go to the Super Bowl in 2020. Ooh. Odds will be crazy. True that. I'm going to get paid. And I'm gone. <laughs> If he's that serious, why only $10? You know what? You should put at least $100 on the 49ers. 49ers was Dark Horse favorites last year to get to the Super Bowl. This year, they've got a little more maturity. I figure by midseason, Jimmy G was starting to round in the form when we played Kansas City. I figure that the 49ers will be looking pretty good by at least game three or four. The defense is probably going to be looking better, too. I would put $100 on the 49ers right now if I was in Vegas today. You already put the odds up there right now. Now you want, Now's the time when you would do it when the odds are really bad because that means it's going to pay a little bit more. <laughs> hey, I'm going to go to camp right now. I want to check out and see what in the 49ers is on your mind. Matter of fact, it's that festive time of the year. As you can see, the lovely lady all in red, glowing red and gold is Debbie Deb Deb. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, it's so nice to meet you. I've been talking to you online forever and seeing you all over the place. And Deb comes over and she starts conversations. She's even got a, a status now because she's so good at starting conversations on Facebook. So she, <laughs> Look out for Deb, boy. You can't get any more 49 in she years. Deb, what's up? How you doing, Rumbo? Oh, I'm doing um, good. Very good. Um, been a tragic season, should I put it that way? Well, I was just getting ready to tell you, but Deb, first, let me ask you this now, before you start, because see, the thing is, we have excuses. We have... We do. We had a team that was damaged right from day, actually week one, and we struggled through the season, and this is why I'm thinking we have that excuse, but Deb, we're through all that misery, suffering, and pain. Did you collect any positives, any negatives that we could, we could talk about here? Let me put it to you this way. I'm going to say it by an old Clint Eastwood movie, The Good, <laughs> Bad, and The Ugly. So let's let's just start off with The Ugly. All right. Injuries, injuries, injuries. Mm. Oh, my God. How were we expected to be that Super Bowl team yeah. when we had so many injuries? Oh. 21 players on IR? Are you serious? Mm. Well... The little silver lining I'm seeing on that right now. It seems like we've gotten rid of the strength and conditioning coach. <laughs> Sorry he lost his job, but we got to do something. Yeah. It was Ray's fault anyway. I could tell by looking at him on the sidelines. <laughs> 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 now, the next step is the bad. Mm. We had six games. Six rumble that we lost by one touchdown. Mm-hmm. Can you imagine if we would have just one more touchdown, we'd have 10 wins? Mm -hmm. Look where we'd be right now. Mm -hmm. First, at least oh, the bye man. week, at, at least the first round of, of the uh, of the wild card, possibly. Exactly, exactly. Well, you know, we've already known that we beat the Seahawks already. Yeah. So, and I think we would have had it on our uh, on our turf. So we would have beat them again. I think so. No <laughs> argument whatsoever to offer. I, yes, we would have beat them again. Sick of him anyway. Now let me tell let me tell you my good. Mm -hmm. Even though we had injuries and it was killing us and it was devastating, the silver lining is we saw the opportunity for Dante Pettis, yeah, Mike Lagitchi, yep, Richie James, yeah, Alfred Morris, Kendrick Bourne, just to name a few, to take the ball and run with. One of my favorites. <laughs> oh, my God. I was really excited to see how these young men performed out there, given their opportunity. Mm. So I'm looking forward to what's going to happen next season. There you go. And and all those guys are going to grow through maturity. Deb, though, as you look at this team and some of the things you just mentioned, how close do you think we are? Now, you see, we could have got a 10-6 had we won some of those close games. And I imagine next year with Jimmy G out there, those close games are going to be, we're going to win at least a percentage of those. 
Uh, right. we, how close do you think we are to competing with some of the teams you've seen in the playoffs so far? Because um, some of them look really tough. And usually the t- team with the toughest defense, we've seen some tough defenses so far. But what do you, what do you, how close are we? I think we're um, a few draft picks and some free agencies away. I'd like to see us get somebody up there um, to be up there with Defoe. Because Defoe performed this this season. I'm not kidding. 12, 12 sacks this season. His best. Oh, my God. And let's see. Who else would I say? I think um, McKinnon's going to do good. Breida's going to do good. Mm. Mozart's going to be good. Mm. That's a triple threat. That's a triple yeah. threat right yeah. there. Well, I like it, too. Um, yeah, that's going to nobody's not. If we put all of them on the field, that, can you even? Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I mean, each, so, each, each one of those running backs you just mentioned, all of them can break one all the way to the house at any given snap. Any given snap. Exactly, exactly. exactly. Then we got our, our wide receivers, you know, Goodwin. Um, I never forget how to, say how, how to say his name, Garcon. That's it, Garcon, yeah. But Garcon yeah. may not. I'm thinking Garcon he may might not. Yeah, because he'll get. And even if he, Dante Pettis is probably going to take that job. I'm just guessing. I mean, right. yeah. Right. Yep, yep. He's getting older and everything like that, and we need that young blood in there, that mm-hmm. young blood and that speed. Mm-hmm. So, yep, yep. And Garcia and then, got hurt. He got hurt so much this last year. That I, Dante may have just asserted himself as looking like, oh, we may have a new golden boy here. I got, I got a feeling about him. So yeah. Yeah, he just needs to put on a little bit more weight. I think everybody and, noticed. Uh, everybody noticed. And, and and not be afraid to get hit. <laughs> oh, um, Debbie, you didn't say that. I said that earlier, and people said, <laughs> "Oh no, man, what are you saying?" No, I'm just saying. I, I, I played the game for it, and I could tell when somebody's pulling and bailing on the play. Right, he's a little bit shy of that hit. Yeah, I thought I saw Dante Bale on the play one or two times. And then I said, maybe it's my imagination. I pulled back off of that. But you noticed it too, didn't you? Okay. I, I actually did. Yeah. I actually did. He's going to be all right, though. Yeah. Uh, after he goes through training and all that other kind of stuff, toughen himself up a little bit. And hopefully we'll have a good strength and conditioning coach that'll mm-hmm. help him build up some muscle. Mm-hmm. And he should be all right. He's mm-hmm. got the speed. He's oh, got the moves. And, oh, he's got people God, he's jerking got the people moves. off their shoes. Oh, Are you kidding me? They cannot. And he's going one way and they're going, to, I've never seen that. But, you know, Jerry used to run people, but they were just getting beat. But Dante makes people look foolish. They're like, what were you, what are you doing? Dante's going this way. The other dude's looking back over his shoulder because Dante put a mood. Look at when your defender looks back over his shoulder. Like, where did you go? What? How did he do that? So, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I'm a big Dante fan. He can stop on a dime and change direction. That's mm-hmm. what I'm saying. Oh, mm-hmm. my goodness. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And, we, and you and you mentioned you you forgot to mention our all pro uh, George Kittle. You know you know George Kittle. I was gonna say. Oh well, let me stop talking. You go right ahead and say then. What were you gonna say? Oh my God, Mr. Kittle, Kittle in the middle, <laughs> George of the Jungle Kittle. Oh my goodness, this young man, this young man, he was feel, he was feeling himself this season. I was so proud of him, so proud of him. Now when he came, when the season started. And they were uh, showing pictures of him in preseason. I'm going like, what did he eat in the off season? He looked big and strong. Huge. You, you see those arms? I mean, it was cut up, it's just, big oh and my cut. Oh goodness! I'm going like, you know, he's 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 ready to go for it now. He's mm-hmm. ready to go. Mm-hmm. So he came into camp <laughs> looking like that, and everybody didn't notice. George was ready. You, you know what, Debbie? That just goes to show his sincerity. It's like Kyle said uh, as he left the guys uh, a few days ago. You know, to go into the break, he says, "You know, we're all. I need to get better. You need to get better. And this means, guys, during the course of the off season, we should all be looking and striving to make improvements." So you know, this right. is, and, and, and Deb, I got to tell you, this is why Trent Trent Brown is no longer with us. Trent, I'm sure they had that conversation with Trent before he left. And, right. and, and they said Trent came back into camp looking just like he did when he left. And they asked him to please, Trent, we want you to be sincere about this, get dedicated, get into some kind of shape. Don't wait till you get to camp to start getting into shape. So Trent right. came back in looking like Trent did. And I think they made up their mind right there, which is why we got McGlinchy. But, you know, I really like McGlinchy. We, we still need to do something about Joe like you probably. What, what do you think about Joe Staley? 
Now, I'm thinking that we need to uh, get somebody in there for Joe's replacement. I love Joe with a passion. Everybody I'm not does. even kidding. Mm. But he's having a, I've noticed he's having a little bit of trouble getting those people that are coming around the edge. If mm. they're quick, yep. you know, he's behind them. Mm. And I don't want to see him start getting to the point where he's holding and causing us penalties. Mm. So we need to get somebody in here that's going to be able to take his place, even though he's playing again. This season, we got, man, my hope is, can you imagine if we get Joe a ring before he goes out? Oh, I want that so badly as well. And Joe, I, I figure Joe will hold, he'll probably hold his own this season, because I figure Joe knows he's going to get it in the best shape of his life, because, you know, as, you, as he gets older like that, he's going to probably have to work a little harder to get in the condition that he needs to be to be Joe right. Staley good, right? So right. if exactly. he can go this season and we can get that Super Bowl, he'll probably retire is my guess. I but if I think not, so. But if not, he may try to pull two years in because his contract, I think, runs. I think it's, was it a three-year contract? I think it's something like that. So he has yeah. actually. I think he has two more years. So right. That's what he yeah. can look forward to. Let me change the subject for a minute. <laughs> we have we have so many people calling for Coach Sailor's head. <laughs> Get rid of him! Get rid of him! Oh my God! He doesn't know what he's doing out there. Come on, you got to give the man a break. He doesn't have the tools that he needs to be able to get his plays out there. Mm -hmm. I'm going like give him, I mean even Kyle said he's going to keep him another season. He thinks he's a, you know, he's a good guy and he knows what he's doing out mm -hmm. there. What you think, Bumbo? I think that's I've been saying that the whole time. I don't mind arguing with people about that. I one of my favorite guys that calls it Trez, and I go back and forth about that every time Trez calls in. <laughs> he is every first thing Trez says, You got to get rid of Robert Sala, Rod Bo. I said, You know, y'all picking on Robert Sala. Robert Sala cannot hold those guys by the hand and run them through plays. He probably goes through that with them in practice and film study and everything else all week long. I tell you something, Deb, they got rid of Jeff Halfley. I really do believe that it was partially his fault. Nobody called Jeff Halfley's name when those secondary was out there messing up. The front right. line defense, I can understand a little bit more emphasis on Salah, but he does have a line coach. Salah is supposed to orchestrate between his coaches what they're supposed to do. He's supposed to right. tell him, if, you're, if this guy's messing up, I'm holding you responsible. I think that's what happened to Jeff Halfley. We'll find out about that later. He's going to Ohio State, but he's yeah, going to be the secondary coach. But I, I really do think we're going to see a, a difference in the secondary. I am with you. I do not blame Robert Sala for every mistake made out there. I mean, he's not out there uh, missing tackles, uh, missing assignments. Mm -hmm. I'm going like, I mean, and then then they're standing there looking at each other like, wasn't weren't you supposed to do that? And I'm going, oh my God, what that's, is that? That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing. That's embarrassing even for <laughs> us, the fans. Uh, we're sitting there back. What are y'all doing? What are you pointing at? <laughs> Stop pointing. Oh, put your. You know, when they do, when they do that, it's just oh, please, you guys. And then, go ahead. And then when it's on national TV and they're oh. going like, well, we're supposed to be coming. I'm going like, come on, fellas. <laughs> Stick together. They <laughs> It's a little complicated, I believe, because they started getting it towards the end of the season. They look a little sharper this last few weeks. Last three or four weeks, they started looking a little better. Th this is why I don't like switching defensive coordinators every year. We, you go right. through that, and you got to start over from scratch. And if we think, if people are upset with what they're saying now, it would be worse next year if we're bringing in a new D.C., because now they got to right. learn everything over. These guys, if they're learning curve, it's that tough. And it takes them that long. And I'm not trying to insult them. But if it takes them that long to pick this up and they can't go fast yet, learning another puts us back at square one. Everything's going to go in slow motion. We're going to get scored upon in depth. You know what really scares me the most? We have stopped the run. What if they start running on us again? Oh, no. There's no reason to be hiring and firing coaches like that, especially if they're not doing a bad job. Just change certain people and let them learn. Oh, get me started on that. But but here's the thing, though, Rombo, um, you have to consider that you got different personnel Everybody. out there all the time. Mm. They're not used to communicating with each other. Mm. You know, they're assuming that, OK, you're doing that, you're doing that. And then they don't really know what the assignment is because it's a different person back there like every other week. No, every week. So Dad. there's no gelling, mm. no gelling at all. Mm -hmm. So like you mm. said, these last couple of games, though, being as we've had consistency, yeah. um, it's been better. <laughs> uh, 
It'll get better, but you know what? And it's the same. Now the front line defense exactly knows what they're doing. They had a few problems. There were guys lined up wrong, things like that. I'm not sure if that was a mental error or, or where the fault lies in that. Because sometimes you should, even as a football player, you know when gap integrity is going to be breached. You had no business. I. That's why sometimes I. That's, these are grown men. And the coach didn't tell them to line up. There's a gap. You remember that Rams game with Gurney? Gurney's probably looking at the side of his He wanted to oh laugh. Oh, my God. He probably wanted to laugh, Deb. He's looking at that hole. He can't believe it. He said, he got to keep his eyes straight before they notice. He got the ball. I went right for that gap. <laughs> oh, come on, Niners. Because they broke down the film. Let everybody see uh, what happened to that play. That's all that's. Ooh, God. Y'all, what are you doing? I would have known. I would have called timeout. If I'm going to line. Coach. Time. Time out. You're let's right. get our act together. You know, <laughs> let's let's talk about this for a second. Don't just run the play and let that happen. This is what I'm saying. Right. Have the wherewithal and enough, uh, and just enough. Even if you're not a leader, say something. You know that's not right. So you know, we 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 have had to learn a lot. There are youngsters, there are rookies. Damn, people expect maybe too much in the first two seasons. I think. What do you, what do you think about that? I think so too. I think so too. Um, Sophomore season, I mean, you're still getting your legs up under you and everything like that. The playbook is is a challenge yep. anyway. Mm. Um, so, <sighs> don't get it. I don't know, but we got we got to do something, or else Jimmy's gonna get killed back there. Oh, you know what? The offensive line, I got a lot of faith in it. I'm I'm concerned about Lakin. I hope he comes back fully uh, healthy. You know, Lakin went against the Bears and allowed one pressure, and you know, Nick is not as quick as getting rid of the ball as Jimmy's going to be. See, right. it's, a, it's about Jimmy can get rid of that ball quick. As soon as he digests and is able to assimilate, I mean, fully assimilate what Kyle's cooking, he's going to be back to being Jimmy G that we saw uh, at, toward the ending of uh, 2017. So I'm not really worried about the offensive line. I do want to see Joshua Garnett over there where, where Mike Person is. Deb, <laughs> you was watching the game, right? You saw that I think Joshua frustrated Mr. All Pro. I, I know. He got How me. come there was no flag? Everybody's, How come there was no flag? Everybody's asking that question. I do not know. Gosh. Aaron Donald gets up and, and poor Joshua said, Aaron gets up. He's all mad because Joshua just got through messing him up on the plate. He just smacks our Joshua in the face. And the ref is standing right there. Garnett's still. Standing right there. <laughs> oh, my God. See, that's. Okay. No, I don't know why nobody's talking reporters. Nobody's don't get talking me started about that. on the ref. Oh yeah, don't I know. Give me that. Started, you know, in, in fact, listen. I, let, let, oh, you know what I want to do? I want to go. Deb had some 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 uh, some uh, uh, predictions for the predictions. for the for the for the game started. <laughs> I had to laugh because when I talked to the Deb, laughed. This uh, this we'll start the season where. Uh, oh wait a minute, I'm sorry. Let me let me get that. Oh, Deb, there you go. Wild card weekend predictions. Uh, Deb, let me quote Deb. She says, "I think Dallas will beat the Seahawks' ass, especially with home field advantages, with no refs to help them out with them bad no calls." And and, and she's right on the money with that. Uh, Deb was right. Dallas won, and <laughs> the Hawks did not get all them freebies that they always get. <laughs> But from there, poor Deb slid right out of the sight. She said, she said the Colts have some fight in them, may give the Texans a run for their money, but will be unsuccessful. As we know, this next weekend, it will be the Colts versus <laughs> the Kansas City Chiefs. Deb, who do you like in that game against the Chiefs, though, so, uh, Colts and Chiefs? Well, let me think about this. <laughs> I think, you know, that's, man, come on, put me on the spot. I'm going to go with the Colts. <laughs> you should. You know why? But, but let me tell you why. Because yes. they got some momentum right now. Yes. So, you know, yeah, let's go there. You should. And i tell you something else, Deb. The Chiefs don't do well with the team that plays solid defense. The Colts are playing rock solid defense, and they're never going to touch Andrew Luck. Because if the, if the Texans can't get to Luck, nobody can get to Luck. It worries me that we even have to play them next year. Also, uh, Deb goes on to say, the Ravens will beat the Chargers and the Bears will pull away from the Eagles. Now, as we know, I thought the Ravens were going to win myself. Uh, so Philip Rivers is going to go see Tom Brady this weekend. And, uh, and the Eagles, the Eagles got blessed. You was right, the Bears were supposed to win that game. Uh, their field goal kicker failed. They say that ball was oh, tipped. Oh, Lord. <laughs> that was rough, huh? Debbie. The these, dogs, right? Oh, yeah. But, Deb, these teams <laughs> that you see in the playoffs. Now, last year's team, could we have dealt with these people? 
if we had a healthy team, yeah. Oh, oh yes, no problem whatsoever. Yeah, you know, I, <laughs> you know, I agree. Because I'm looking at some of the things we did. The Jaguars have burnt out. We played a good game against the Jaguars. I don't know that a defense. I there's some defenses in, in this particular playoff so far. I, I, the Bears and Eagles both play really tough defense, but I don't think it's any better than the Jags defense was last year. Uh, and that means we could have dealt with them. Uh, Indy played a solid defense, but they have Andrew Luck. Andrew Luck is very scary again, so I'm not sure. I just I, I try to imagine where would we end up in these playoffs. Right. Ah, uh, God. We got to get Jimmy G back, Bill Deb. We got to get Jimmy G back. Yes, yes, yes. He's excited to get back, too, so, you know... <laughs> And next year, you figure after an Achilles injury, it takes a while to heal up. Richard Sherman, had teams known, they probably could have fired Richard Sherman up a little more because it takes about a year to fully get recovered from that Achilles injury. But just right. his reputation scared people so bad they wouldn't even throw over there. They should have. I know, wouldn't even throw to that side of the field. <laughs> <laughs> they said, just in case, yep. you know, we're not going to go that way. Next year, they it's too late. He'll be healed up. Richard Sherman will be back to being Richard Sherman next year. If they think what they saw last year was, if they want to throw next year, I'm looking forward to that. Richard Sherman will have a couple of INTs next year. Oh, God. <laughs> I can't wait till next year, Debbie. Debbie, what do you think is going to give me, give me, Give me some predictions as to what do you think is going to happen next year. Next year, let me think. Debs. I think we're going to have a squad of people going to the Pro Bowl. Ah, They're like, going to show, show, up, show up and show out. Like we did during the Harbaugh years. We had half our team going to yep. the Pro Bowl. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Um, I think um, we're going to surprise a lot of people because yeah. they're think, thinking, looking back at the last two seasons, mm -hmm. that um, 49ers, man, they not, they're not no trouble. No, they're not no, no. We, don't wait, get, we don't get no wait. respect. Yeah. That's all right. That's all right. I like being the underdog. Yeah. Surprise everybody. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Deb and I are in lockstep. I am convinced. The 49ers could come back with a vengeance because of nothing else, Debbie. This bitter taste that was left in their mouth after such a nasty season like we just had, these guys got to come in fired up. And this is what this is the advantage of having a young team that just got their butt handed to them two mm -hmm. times. And that means when they come back next, they've got blood in their eye. They are sick and tired. They want respect. So you're going to see guys are going to work hard. You thought George Kittle came into camp looking like a beast this year? Watch. That's what I'm saying. Get on his program. <laughs> yes. Everybody get on George Kittle's program. Come back looking like that. Bet you nine or ten of them at least do. And I know the offense is going to come back. And Dante, we're talking. You know, we would love you, man, but you got to put up some size. You can't play in the NFL. <laughs> what does Dante weigh? About 205? If that? If that? He's a, I don't think he weighs him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to try to mess with him. Dante's 6'1". He get, him and Kendrick Bourne both. Kendrick doesn't get hurt, though. He carries, Kendrick might be one of the wiry, strong guys. But Dante needs to gain at least 15 more pounds in order to be able to take this. I agree with that. Yeah, those NFL yep. uh, impact, yeah. So, get him uh, to 225, he might do all right. You gotta be careful about his speed though. I want I want him to maintain that speed. A lot of times guys can gain and still pick up speed because the strength and conditioning makes him still be able to move. So I'm trying to figure out, because Dante makes them moves like he makes them. Can he still make those moves at a little heavier weight? I'm hoping so. You just said strength and conditioning. Now when I'm thinking about that, I need somebody in there that knows from A to Z, talking about nutrition, talking about how they get their rest. Talking about how much um, keep themselves hydrated, mm, keep the all that you know, keep the, all the stretching, all that kind of stuff ahead of time. All that contributes to a healthy team. We need that. We need it. Mm -hmm. And go to bed at night. And guys, if you want to go out and stop eating so much, what is that stuff they eat all the time? Uh, the Chinese food place. <laughs> oh, ah. The place right down the road from the, from exactly. the stadium. They need to stop uh, all of that. Yeah, because they, they, they all park down. Wow. That's hey, damn. too much cholesterol. Damn, you know, you may have hit the head. All of them like to eat down there. That might be the place. Could that be stop it? it? Oh, stop it. It's a, and it's an all-you-can-eat <laughs> place, too. So yeah, don't do it. Oh man, but we, we you know what we we, uh, we we don't want to call this the call it the uh, restaurant name out because they might find us and get mad. Because <laughs> <laughs> y'all know who I'm talking about. Because <laughs> they all meet down there every week. 
<laughs> anyway, damn, I'm telling you what, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go and, and tell you what, we're gonna, we're gonna get back together. I'm gonna see you all, because I'm gonna, I'm gonna get ready, we're, we're gonna ready to do some other things. And Deb, we gotta talk again before the season starts, right after draft, right after round of draft to see who we pick oh, up. Yeah, and then yeah. we can make a better prediction as we was what's gonna happen, all right? Oh, you know I'm going to as many training camps as I possibly can. I don't, if you see Deb out there with the big hat, you'll know that's Deb with that big, <laughs> gorgeous smile of hers. Deb, I'm going to give you the countdown, Deb. Three, two, one. Nine <laughs> she, Lord. she got that from me, okay? I'm just, I'm taking credit for it. <laughs> Debbie, damn, damn! I've always been Debbie's funny. I just isn't she special? And you can catch Debbie. You see, she's got her own customized jersey, top hat Deb. That's it, cause she wears a top hat all the time. She's got a bunch of them too. And Deb is, boy, you can tell, ladies are a hardcore 49 fan. <laughs> Deb, fam. All right, plenty of things coming up. God knows what's gonna come up next, but I will see you. Friday as we get ready to talk football. And fam, we'll talk about what we're going to do this weekend because I, I ain't going to say nothing bad about the Rams right now because I've been too good. Of good. <laughs> I look forward to seeing you in just a little while. Hey, 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 hey. Give me some likes. You know how much I love and collect me likes. I put them all up on the wall. Collect them. Each one of them. <laughs> Share and subscribe. Fam, I'll see you in a minute. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have a secret stone. Oh, this is crazy, mother.